Hello, I'm Shauna Oliver with Med One. I am a clinical educator, and today we will be discussing and demonstrating the Carolex VT200. Indications for use. The VT200 is indicated for use with patients with the following wounds. Traumatic, dehiscent wounds, chronic wounds, such as pressure ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, venous leg ulcers, acute wounds, flaps and grafts. Contraindications. The VT200 is contraindicated in patients with the following conditions. Presence of necrotic tissue, malignancy except for the quality of life reason for terminal patients, untreated osteomyelitis, exposed arteries, veins, nerves, or organs, and use over anastomic sites. So many people think that negative pressure wound therapy is just a fluid collection device. Actually, what it does is it promotes granulation tissue inside of that wound, so it begins to fill in that empty space so that we can heal the patient. It does a cell stretch, so that is what gives that granulation tissue formation inside of the wound. The VT200 best practices are the standard of the industry. The defaults at negative 125 millimeters of mercury, and it also has a default setting at continuous, which is 90% of patients' orders. The VT200 has three sizes of canisters based on patient's needs. It will come with the 300 cc canister, but also available is the 500 cc and the 1000 cc. These are based on patient needs and clinician's orders. Carolex has made it easy for the clinician to choose the right dressing based on the patient's needs. They offer a large dressing a medium dressing, and a small dressing. And my favorite, the pre-cut spiral dressing. Also made available, bonus just drape. We also have just the port and a Y connector. Should the clinician choose to not do a traditional bridge and they just want to bridge two wounds together with one device. Next, we're going to demonstrate the application process. Please note that this is for education purposes and I will not be wearing gloves and not be using an aseptic technique. So after you clean the wound and the peri wound, you're going to want to protect the intact skin with the drape. Please note that foam never touches intact skin as it can macerate and break it down. Inside each kit you will find drape, your size foam dressing, and tubing. It is important when you begin cutting the dressing that you follow the scissor line. You always wanna cut with that. If you don't, you will not be able to remove the stabilization. When it is time to remove the stabilization backing, you will do one, two, then you will remove the third, and then finally any blue pieces that are left. So after you have protected the, the peri wound, you want to go ahead and insert the foam into the space, like so. And then we will close it down. It 
It is important that you do not pack the wound with foam. You simply just want to fill the space as packing the foam may alter blood flow to the base of the wound. So I've removed the one, two. I'm now removing the three. And the blue comes next. So after you have completed this process, now it is time to cut a hole to add the port. It is important that when you do this, it should be about a quarter size. So you can, we can make sure that we have plenty of airflow and you do not get a false block. The clinician will always choose the exact spot to cut the hole over the foam. It is a best practice. You can use in the middle we would not want the patient to be laying on the port, so if you needed to, you could bridge this down. Um, but for, again, educational purposes, we are just doing a basic application. So after we have cut the hole, we have our port, and it's also numbered. You will follow the numbers by removing the backing of the port. And then you go ahead and remove the rest. Of your stabilization pieces. Once you have everything applied, you'll notice that the foam dressing is full of air and it looks like a marshmallow. What you want to be able to see is when we turn on the Carolex, the air will be removed and the dressing will actually look quite like a raisin. To connect the port to the canister is a simple connection piece. Just simply twist without over twisting and then make sure that your clamps are open and ready to go. You are now ready to turn on the device. Now that the dressing is secured on the patient, now it's time to power on the device. Start on the control panel by holding down the power button until the green light comes on. Then you will select your therapy, whether that be continuous or intermittent. It will default to continuous and hit OK. Next, you will select your pressure. It defaults to the gold standard, negative 125. Press OK. At this time, however, if you needed to change based on the clinician orders, you may do so by using the arrows. The Carolex VT200 comes with four buttons. The on-off button, the change settings button, the mute button or back button. The fourth button is selects OK. It will also lock the device or pause therapy. If I hold down, the lock button will engage. If I want to unlock, again, hold down, the lock will disappear, and we are back to changing any settings that need to be changed. The VT200 comes with four 
alarms. One is the power alarm. So you always want to make sure that the patient is connected to electricity when they're in the bed so that the battery, the internal battery, doesn't die. It is a 24-hour battery. Next, we have a block alarm and a leak alarm. Finally, a full canister alarm. This concludes our training today on the basic application techniques. For more information, please reach out to your local rep or find us at med1group.com. Thank you.